right, Wayne, we're going to go ahead and do a flow along surface uh, demo for you using your design here. Great pieces, by the way, and I may end up having to steal your squiggle. Um, so what I've done is I've taken the piece that you've given me, and I've made a copy of your squiggle, and I've just laid it out flat just so I can use it for this example. And I can see that you want to lay these out inside of this channel. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of this one that's up there just so it's out of my way. I've got a copy of it already. So I'm going to take and we need to create a virgin surface that represents this bottom surface inside of your channel. Uh, we can't use the one that's there because it's a poly surface and it remembers the fact that it was a poly surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract that surface and I do not remember where that's at in Rhino Gold, but extract Extract surface. I'm going to select that surface, hit enter, and now it's a separate piece. I'm going to hide everything else just for the time being. Oops. Grab the surface I extracted, grab that, and I'm going to let's see, hide everything but. but I had selected. All right, so this is the surface we need to recreate first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a sweep to. I'm going to use the edges of this surface as my rail and my profile curves to create a virgin surface. And just so I've got this a little straightened out, you know me, I like my layer colors. It's a quirk from Matrix. I'm going to create a new layer color. See green for that one. I'm going to create another one that I'm going to make. Uh, let's see, let's make that one lavender just so I got some differentiating there. All right, so let's do a sweep two. That's going to be in modeling. Sweep two rails. Outside, outside, and end. Maintain height. Make sure that one of my new colors here is active. All right, and I need to change that layer, so I need to create another one. Let's see, I'm going to make this one. Make that one brown. We'll move this to that color. All right, so now I can turn off the Rhino Gold colors. And that leaves me with just this new, brand new virgin surface I just created and the object that I want to flow onto that surface. So now we need to get this curved surface and we need to slap that down against the ground flat. And we're going to use UV curves command to do that. So we're going to type in the command C R E A T, create UV curves, and select that out of the list. Command line is going to ask us to select the surface to create the curves with, and I'm just going to highlight over the whole thing. It's going to ask us to select the curves. I again, highlight again, and then hit enter. And let me switch to my top down view. And as you can see, it's created a set of curves that actually represent that surface laid out flat. Now, it's always going to be a rectangle or a square of some sort, regardless of the shape. It's, that's just a quirk of the command. So I'm going to pull this up and out of the way here for a moment. And one thing I've noticed about this command as well is that it does leave duplicate curves out for some reason. I'm not sure exactly why. So I'm going to high, I'm going to click through and I'm going to find the one curve that's complete. Just because I know I can do this in one fail swoop and get it all. I'm just going to hide that for the moment. Delete the other set. Do a show, and there's that curve again. I'm going to make another layer. Make that bright red. And put this on there. Okay. 
So now I've got curves that represent, I'm going to explode this so I can sweep this again and create a flat surface that represents the curve surface. All right, so now I've got two surfaces out here that represent each other. The next important thing, and this is actually a really important step, is making sure that the surfaces, both of them, match each other. And by that I mean they need to have their directions, their no surface normals, their U and their V directions need to match. And how we check that is with a command called direction. So I'm going to start off with my original surface here, and I'm going to type in D-I-R for direction and enter. I'm going to switch to my perspective view so we can see this better. And you'll see some white arrows, a bluish green arrow, and a red arrow. And what these are representing, the white ones are your normals, and we want that to be facing out and away from your surface. So the base of the arrow, if you look here, the, this base that I'm snapping to should be the bottom of your surface, and the point of the arrow should be outside of that surface. That's good. Next thing we want to pay attention to is the other two arrows, that green and the red arrow. Now in this case, the green arrow is pointing up. If I was in the looking down or top view, it's pointing up and the red arrow is pointing to the right. And we want to make sure that that matches on this surface over here. So I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to highlight our new surface. I'm going to right click to run the command again. Switch to perspective real quick, and as you can see already, they point in different directions. So let's flip the normals first, and that we can just change by clicking the flip in the command line. Now the normals point correct. And if you remember, the green arrow was pointing up, and the red arrow was pointing to the right. Well, the red arrow is pointing the correct direction. The green arrow is pointing down, so we need to change that. And we've got three different buttons here in the command line we can use to change those. The green and the and the red, I never remember at the time I'm using this, which one is which, so it's hit or miss. And swap will completely change the two. So you play around with those until you get them to face the right way. So let's see, I'm gonna try U. Nope, U is the red one. I'll put it back and click V. All right, so now our U and V directions and our normals point the same way on both surfaces. Enter to finish. If you want to come back and double check, you can't check. You can check multiple surfaces at the same time by highlighting them both and rerunning the command. And we can see that everything points the same way. The next thing we need to do is that if you look at the ISO curves that make up these two surfaces, this flat one has two curves, one going long and one going short widthwise where this other surface has whole bunches of them, and there's different spacing. Well, we need to even that out. That helps things smooth, flow smoother. Nothing's going to be perfectly smooth. There's always going to be some distortion. But this helps mitigate that distortion as much as possible. So I'm going to highlight both surfaces. I'm going to do a rebuild. And... I've currently got 25 and 30 in mine. Let's do a preview. That should be okay. Actually, I think I want to do, let's figure out which ones go the lengthwise. I want to up that one a little bit to get the boxes a little bit more square. Preview again, that's the one. I can probably drop the other direction down to 20. There we go, that's not too bad. Now, both of these two surfaces surfaces are, as far as the computer is concerned, identical. And now we're ready to run our command. So I've got your pieces here. I'm going to switch back to my looking down view, or top view. Now you can move this surface to wherever you want. If you want to center it on the viewport, you can center it on the viewport and then begin your work. I'm just going to move these guys on in here. All right. And I'm just going to eyeball centering it. You can go ahead and nitpick that to your heart's content. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind with this particular command, it gets wonky if 
your objects go outside of the box. So the closer you can get them to the box frame, the better you will be. This little bit I'm not overly worried about. If we were more than that, we could run into potential problems. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move that there. Adjust its first position. Using the gumball and the alt command to duplicate. I'm going to create another. And I just realized that we're below that surface. So I need to raise that up. Move this one here, adjust its position. And we'll continue to do this until we've got these stretched out all the way across. And excuse the sound of dogs that are getting ready to climb all over me. And they love to play with my mouse hand. All right. And once you get these kind of laid out like this, you can go ahead and just grab all of them and stretch them. So we only got this little tiny bit left over. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab all four of those. And I'm going to do a 1D transform. And then readjust its position. Until I've got it as close to completely within that space as possible. All right, so now we're ready to flow. Now, the relationship of these objects to our flat surface is going to represent how they will move onto our curved surface. So if you notice, I've got these partially buried in here. That's how they're going to be on our curved surface. Let's go to my front view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these guys and I'm going to kind of do a 1D transform in this viewport. So I don't have too much. The more I have going down below, the more distortion is going to happen as it tries to match this curvature. So the top of it will be nice and puffy, but as it goes to the inside, it's going to try to squish it together. And that can break geometry. So let's see where we're at right now. All right, so let's go ahead and let's give this a try. I'm going to highlight all of these objects, and I'm going to begin our command. And I actually found that command in the Transform tab, and it's called Dynamic Flow on Surface. And what do we got here? Yeah, I'm not sure what the smash is, but let's go ahead and try the flow on surface. Now, if we look at the command line, it's going to ask us for our base surface select near a corner. Now, I'm going to choose this corner right over here because it's going to be an easy one to grab at the bottom. Next, it's going to ask us to select on our target surface, which is this guy right here, our curved surface, near a matching corner. So since I'm looking at this as though this is the bottom right-hand corner, I need to collect, select that same spot on my target surface. And there we go. It just flowed right up on there. So let me turn on our ring. Let's see how that went up on in there. It went up on there nicely, but you notice we've got everything sits way back. I guess that's why your piece was as tall as it was. So I'll grab these off of the base. I'm going to be looking through at it from the side. And I'm going to raise them straight up until they're just barely under the surface. Those raised up as a result as well. So let me undo. No, they didn't. Is my history turned off? My history is turned off. We need to keep history on when we do this. So let me go all the way back. Turn on history. Let's try our flow on surface again. No, um, hmm. I don't know what the dynamic flow on surface is, but you can play with it after you've seen how this one here works. They should be similar. Go back to the drop down, flow on surface. A dynamic flow on surface may be similar to GemVision Smart Flow. I'm not sure. All right, so we've got that. We also know that we need to raise these. Give it a second to work. And 
my history turned off on me. How did that history turn off? Try it again. Sorry, sir. History is on. Bottom corner. Bottom corner. Brings it up. There we go. All right, so we need to make sure everything crosses, is intersecting that surface even just a little bit. Okay, let's turn our ring back on. Okay, that's got that just a touch below. If you need them raised a little bit higher, we can do a 1D transform. That will get them up a little bit taller. Now this can be a buggy command, just it can cause a lot of lag. Once you've made, made an adjustment to your initial geometry, wait a moment until everything moves. So if I was to move this one, say, way up here for whatever reason, give it a second to catch up before you start moving. All right. And of course, you can throw all the extra stuff away once you're done and you've got things saved. Mirror the pieces over to the other side. And uh, just double check that everything intersects and crosses through your base surface. And everything will join together nicely and print nicely. I hope that helps, sir. And take care. Let me know if you have any questions. And play with this dynamic flow on surface and see what that does. I'm curious now that I've noticed it's different. All right. Thank you, sir.